You didn't do it? Okay. Here we go. Let's mark the quiz. Those of you that did it. Mr. Duick's in a grumpy mood now. So, I gotta be honest with you, momentum is a unit that kids find difficult from my prior experience, and my message is, for those of you who think you're gonna slough, you don't wanna be sloughing at all. Number one, 112 kilogram football player running with a speed of four meters per second, tackles another player. What impulse? What's another word for impulse? Okay, we all need to know that. Caitlin, what's another word for impulse? Change momentum. So when they say impulse, something you change momentum. Must the tackler give the other player in order to bring him a stop to a stop? Now there's two ways to think about change in momentum. There's the actual equation that says that change in momentum is equal to force times change in time. Has this question mentioned a force or a time? No, nope. Connor. The other way to think about this is to realize what's changing anything. So I think what they want us to do, the change in momentum is going to be the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Are angles mentioned at all in this question? Okay, I think we can assume everything is nice and linear. What's his final momentum? What's his final momentum? That's a number. Huh? No, what's his final momentum as a number? Why do, how do you know zero? Because it's stop. Right? Momentum is mass. Final momentum is zero minus. Now, momentum is mass times velocity, so it's going to be mass times V initial is your initial momentum. It's going to be zero minus 112 times 4, negative 448 kilogram meters per second. Does the negative have to be there? Yeah, that's the impulse. You have to give an impulse to cancel out the runner's initial momentum, you have to take away his momentum. Okay. In terms of marking, I would probably go uh, half mark for that, half mark for that, half mark for the numbers, and a half mark for the answer. Two. What's the magnitude of the impulse needed to change the speed of a 10 kilogram body from 20 to 12 in a time of five seconds? Okay, now they're talking about a time, and B asks about a force. Now I'm going to start out the same way. The magnitude of the impulse is going to be the change in momentum, which is going to be momentum final minus momentum initial, which is going to be mass V final, mass 10. V final, 12 minus mass, excuse me, 10. V initial, 20. What do you get for A? The change in momentum magnitude has to be, it's going to be negative. Now, because I only asked for the magnitude, if you didn't put the negative, I won't be fussy because technically the magnitude is just how big. I'll include the negative just to be fussy, though. Uh, 120 minus 200, you get negative 80. And I'll put a decimal for two sig figs, kilogram meters per second. The answer to A is negative 80 kilogram meters per second. B, what force is needed? Now I'm going to use the second definition of impulse, Nicole. The fact that impulse is also equal to the force times the change in time. Brett, how would I get the F by itself? Turns out the force is going to be the impulse divided by the time, which is negative 80 divided by 5 seconds. And I think you'll get a force of negative 16 newtons. If you left the negative off, I won't freak out. What's the negative telling me, Connor? It's telling me it's in the opposite direction of the motion. Is that okay? Number three. A cart of mass 3.2 kilograms traveling 1.2 meters per second collides with a stationary cart of mass 1.8. Both carts stick together and move off after the collision. What's the final speed? Is there a collision? Then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the sum 
of all the initial momentums equals the sum of all the final momentums. Now what? Well, I ask, are there angles involved here, or is everything nice and linear? I think a cart rolling on the ground, I think, Joel, I can use my imagination. I think that's all going to be in a nice straight line. I'll let to the right be positive, to the left be negative if there's a diagram, or I'll let the initial be positive and the final. Anyways, I think I can, I don't need to bring out the sine law and the cosine law like we were doing last class. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Mass 1. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both. Stuck together or separate? Stuck together. This is going to be M1, V1 initial equals M1 plus M2, V final. V final is going to be M1, V1 initial all over M1 plus M2. It's going to be 3.2 times 1.2 all divided by 3.2 plus 1.8. Final velocity is going to be three point two times one point two divided by five. I think three point two plus one point eight is five. Do you get point seven six eight? Point seven six eight meters per second. In terms of part marks, I give you one mark if I saw that, one mark if I saw that, one mark if I saw that, and one mark for the answer. Is that two sig figs? That I'm fine. <clears throat> Doesn't it feel good to be able to ask a question like that on a quiz? Give yourself a score, please, out of ten. Luckily, those many of you that didn't do the quiz, it's only going to cost you a ten spot, not a big chunk of marks. And if you could put your name on your quiz and pass them in words, please. Last day, we upped the level of difficulty quite a chunk, and I realized it was a big chunk. Can you all get out lesson six from last day, please? Lesson six from last day, two-dimensional momentum. Now, I do find, Kara, these questions way more interesting because when things collide, they usually do bounce off at angles. This is the physics of car crashes, and this is the physics of bullet billiards, pool. Great. Okay. And once you're there, pause for a second. So that's the bonus video game. Back to here. Kayla, here's what we said. As soon as we see there's angles, and it's usually pretty obvious either from the picture or from the way they've described stuff. We're looking at example four if you want to just kind of jog your memory. I started out the same way. I still wrote the sum of all the initial momentum equals sum of all the final. And I even still wrote the same equation. I said, what's moving beforehand? Mass one, mass two, or both? What's moving afterwards? Mass one, mass two, or both? Do they stick together or are they separate? But then the difference, Mitchell, was we started dulping. We started drawing a picture. We started doing vector math. We said, look, draw a picture, label each arrow, not with its velocity, not with its mass, with its momentum, because it's momentum that's conserved, and then add your vectors tip to tail. Almost always, you're going to end up with the cosine law, unless it's a lovely right angle question, then Jeanette, it's much easier. But almost always, you're going to end up with a cosine law. And then you have to use the sine law to find an angle. We're going to come back to example five, but right now let's look at example six. Okay. I'd like to think, Trevor, just glancing at example six, it's pretty obvious angles here. Right? The diagram pretty much gives it away. Is there a collision, Trevor? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the sum of all the initial momentum has to equal the sum of all the final momentum. Normally I'd write it down here, but I have a feeling I'm going to run out of room. So I'm trying to save space. 
Before the collision Zay, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Momentum of, you know what? Let's not call it mass 1 and 2. How about mass A and B? Would that make more sense based on this diagram? Yeah. So mass A initial, momentum of object A initial is what's moving. Wham! Is a collision. After the collision, what's moving Zay? Mass A, mass B, or both? Stuck together or separate? So, momentum A initial, sorry, initial, final, Mr. Duick. And momentum B, final. Now we're going to dalt, we're going to draw our little picture. I think the momentum of A initial looks like that. What magnitude will I put on this arrow? What magnitude will I put on this arrow? Four. Mass times velocity. Connor, that worked. I don't care if you don't show if you go straight to your calculator. Not because I don't want you to, but often the arrow is so small it gets cluttered if you write five times 0.8 equals four. So I'm just going to say uh, four kilogram meters per second. Equals. After the collision, mass A looks like this. And I don't know the angle or the magnitude. In fact, this is what I'm trying to find. Plus, mass B looks like this. And it even gives me an angle of 29 degrees right there. What magnitude will be on mass B? Question, Kayla? Kayla? Just saying. Front row's open. Best place to learn. Nicole, what magnitude am I going to put on here? Which, more specific? Really? Really? Three? Here's the two that I'm adding together. How will I add them together, Brianne? Draw them. Tip to tail. And I also know that when I add these two, it has to give me a dead horizontal line. That'll help me draw the triangle. I think the triangle is going to look like this. Four. No, not four, Mr. Dewitt. That one you don't know. Sorry. Momentum of object A final. Plus three. equals 4. I need to find an angle in here. I need to find an angle in here. Well, if this angle here is 29 degrees, I'm pretty sure that this angle here is 29 degrees. Sokotoa? Don't think so. Unless this ended up being 90, but I don't know. I can't assume. Cosine law. You know how I know? Side, angle, side. So what's the cosine law? The cosine law says this. Momentum of object A final squared equals 4 squared plus 3 squared minus 2 times 4 times 3 cosine of the angle. Oh, you get four again? Or no? Ah! Whoops, wrong button, Mr. Duke. That's going to scare everybody. Square root this thing. 
I almost forgot the square root because it's such a nice answer. I think 2.0 kilogram meters per second. Trevor, here's the problem. All I've found is a momentum. What did the question want me to find? The final what? The word before that, the final what? Velocity. If I know momentum, how can I find velocity? I agree. It's going to be 2 divided by 5. The final velocity is going to be 0 0.40 meters per second at... Now I need a direction. Well, here's my vector. Connor, can you see it's starting from down here? I think my angle that I want is this. My direction is going to be uh, what of what? You know what? I better put a compass on there. Hey, what is that going to be? What of what? West of north? Let's see. Here's north. There's west of north. Does that make sense? So which one is this one? I think it's north of west. Yes? Okay. So you know what? I'll even be clever. I'll leave a space and go north of west. East? Sorry, east. Where'd the west come from there? East. That's why I draw the compass rows every time, because I get those mixed up all the time. By the way, my mistake wasn't actually the east-west. My mistake was listening to... Con yeah, okay. Sorry, I won't, do, I won't listen to you again. How can I find theta? Sokotoa? Yeah, I don't think there's a right angle here. Sine law. So what's the sine law? Well, I got room down here. The sine of my mystery angle divided by what's across from it equals the sine of the angle that I know divided by what's across from it, which was 2.0. Not 0.40. I'm not using the velocity. I'm using the momentum because that's how long it is. I'll get the sine of theta equals 3 sine 29 divided by 2. 3 sine 29 divided by 2. And then to get the actual theta, inverse sine of that, and I get 46.6 degrees, 7 degrees, sorry, 46.7 degrees, 47 degrees really, north of east. Is that okay? Well then, turn the page. We did number 11 already. Let's try example 8. Do you guys want to try number eight on your own? Yeah, no, I can do it with you. Or if you want to give it a try first and then I go over it, it's up to you. How about I'll do it up here, try it on your own, but I won't turn my screen off so you can, if you get stuck, look up. See so if you can figure this out.
object B, I don't think, has an initial velocity. I think its initial velocity is zero. And this is my hideous quick drawing, if you're wondering. All the previous ones were stolen from old provincials or somebody else had made up. This was me, Mr. Do It, going really quickly with graphics. Am I right? I don't know. Rianne says she got the same answer as me, which gives me confidence. Gonna be two of these on your room. Who needs more time? A few more? Okay. All right. How huh? I many you got that? Oh, great. Now, if, if you're getting the hang of this, that means uh, two of these on the test times seven. 14 marks, if you could get, that's 100% on 14 marks, assuming you don't get a sloppy mistake. But even if you do, this, by the way, Connor, is why you show work. It's if you make a mistake, I can still follow what you did and see, you know, oh, you move the decimal point over one or your two became a three on the next line you know thing the, the dumb things our brains do brains turn back please if you would to example five
Example five. This one here. Found it? A metal disc explodes, boom, into three pieces, which fly off on the same geometric plane. What that's saying is, let's assume they all stay flat, because 3D, you need calculus to do this. The first piece has a mass of 2.4 kilograms, and it flies off north, north, oh, oh, better draw a compass. Flies off north at 10 meters per second. The second piece has a mass of 2 kilograms and it flies east at 12.5 meters per second. What's the speed and direction of the third piece, which has a mass of 1.4 kilograms? Here's bomb forensics. Now, really, the FBI or the RCMP, if they're actually looking at a bomb, of course, there's more than three pieces, but the principle is going to be the same. They're going to start out with a basic assumption. Is there a collision? No. Is there an explosion? Yeah, then they're going to start out by saying before the explosion, what was the momentum of the metal disc? It's a trick question meant to be really obvious. Brett, zero. So you know what the final momentum has to be? Zero. Now, we're going to put zero for the first before, but after the explosion, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, mass three, or all of them? Stuck together or separate? Momentum of object one, momentum of object two, momentum of object three. What does momentum of object one look like? Well, it says north, and it's 2.4 kilograms, 10 meters a second. I think it's 24 pointing to the north. Plus. What does the momentum of object two look like? Well, it says east. Connor, which direction is east on our page? To the left or to the right? Excellent, Connor. Connor, what number am I going to put on here? What's the magnitude of this line? Did you do that in your head? I hope you did. Did you? Thank you. I saw someone reach for their calculator. Your two times table. Come on. Plus, do I know anything about the third one? Okay. Well, how will I add the first two vectors together? Let's do that. We can do that. And they're nice. They're at a right angle. It means this is going to be Sokotoa, which I like. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Now, some of you might say, "Hey, Mr. Do it gets ah, it's not this. It's not this." What was my initial momentum, Arvinder? My overall momentum, what was it? Zero. You know what my final momentum has to be then? What will that look like in a triangle? Back to where you started from. There's momentum of object three. That's the magnitude. Oh, and Nicole, the direction is going to be that. And this is what they do in bond forensics. Now, just imagine this procedure, but instead of adding three vectors, they're probably adding several thousand. But they can get a pretty good idea, mass, how far it's traveled. You can figure out roughly what its velocity must have been to get that far. It's more complicated, but the principle starts out here. So I'm going to give you a lovely two-dimensional explosion on your test because it's explosions. How can I not like that? How can I find mass 3? Do I need to go all cosine law on you? Sorry, how can I find momentum 3? Do I need to go all cosine law on you? No, I can use Pythagoras for Pete's sakes. Oh, this is great.
You get uh, 34.655. Yeah. Momentum of object 3 equals 34.655. Okay. Oh, uh, how can I find the velocity of object 3? Because this is the momentum of object 3. If I know the momentum, how can I find the velocity? Divide by mass. Very good. Uh, mass 3, mass 3, mass 3. 1.4. Twenty-four point eight. Yes, I would accept two hundred twenty-five. Right, two sig figs. Uh, theta. Oh, is there a right angle? Yeah, because they went north and east. I know that's a right angle, so I can actually not sign law. I can say, hey, which trig function? Tan. Running out of room. Have I got some more? Oh, I got a little bit of room here. Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Shift tan of 24 over 25. 43.8 degrees. What of what, Connor? What of what? Yes. 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 Okay. That's what's happening in any explosion. In any explosion, your initial momentum is zero, assuming the thing wasn't moving. Yep. South of, isn't it going this way, down this way? I'm not looking at which way the black vector is going. I'm saying to get the red one, I'd have to go south. I'd have to head east and head south of that to get that angle and end up down there, wouldn't I? Okay. Two-dimensional momentum. What's your homework? Well, I didn't attach an assignment to this. From the ultimate review, you can now do numbers 1, 14, 22, and 34.